Welcome back. It is the Country Viewpoint here on Flow FM. And it's time to check in with a local from one of our Flow FM network areas. He's a very busy man indeed, and it's great to have him join me. His name is Brenz Saunders. Brenz, he's the uh, SA Greens co-convener. It's great to have you on. How are you? Thanks very much for having me. Um, I wouldn't call myself a local anymore, given that I now reside in Adelaide, but thanks for uh, referring to me as a local I'm previously living in Sejuna, so thank you very much. We're always going to claim you, given that you do hail from Sejuna. Just tell us a little bit about your background, first of all, Brenz. Yeah, look, I'm a proud Aboriginal man. I hail from Sejuna. I'm a Wurundjeri with Wurundjeri the man. Grew up in Sejuna on, on country SA on the coastline there um, and moved over to Adelaide well, within 10 years ago, so to speak, I think, um, for boarding school. So, you know, like many other Air Peninsula, Far West Coast individuals who have gone over to Adelaide to further their education and, and opportunities for employment, uh, I get to, to now be a part of that um, cohort of people and get to say that I'm doing pretty cool stuff uh, in the roles that I hold. Well, one of the other cool bonuses of having you on, Brenz, is that uh, you did say off air you grew up hearing plenty of flow living in Sejuna. So uh, we're very proud to have you on. Now, uh, let's just quickly talk about the uh, fact that you did say there you're a proud Aboriginal and you're a proponent of The Voice. And it was a red letter day in South Australia the other day. So just tell us about how special it was seeing that unfold and uh, and why it is that uh, everyone should support The voice. Yeah, look, it was a great day on Sunday uh, when the, uh, the governor officially confirmed uh, the bill uh, to establish a First Nations voice uh, in the South Australian Parliament. There, uh, there were thousands of South Australians uh, at the event on Sunday. I myself attended and, and was quite proud to be a South Australian to witness such historical actions take place, not only uh, in the interest of the First Nations community, but also in the interest of advancing our state forward and making a a more reconciled uh, state in that regard. So that moment really is going to last quite a long time uh, in my memory and and certainly um, I'll be sharing that with future generations to come. Um, Look, it's it's a very important day uh, for the state to to recognise what has transpired. You know, uh, a First Nations voice to parliament uh, will enable uh, a lot of opportunities and transparency Uh, with First Nations communities engaging uh, with the parliament structure and with ministers and with chief executives on a a regular basis. Uh, That will enable concerns to be heard, uh, but also solutions to be created. That's the biggest thing to come out of this. is It's just not a matter of um, getting the voice to be heard, but also to be part of the solution uh, for these complicated problems, whether they be social or whether they be economical, um, but being at the table to, to create those solutions is also a very big bonus for um, the community, the Aboriginal community, but also for the state at its large as well. Um, look, I'm a big supporter of the voice uh, to Parliament. Obviously, we're, we're heading towards a, a federal referendum, and I will be supporting that openly and wholeheartedly. I think it's a, a important part of this nation's chapter of moving and progressing the country forward towards a reconciled state, but also uh, moving towards uh, an opportunity for First Nations people to be recognised in that birth certificate of this country. Um, And at the same time, yet again, as I said before, be a part of those decision-making processes uh, and solution-based activities. So that's a big part uh, of what The Voice will present uh, to the country as well. We, We certainly know there's some challenges and it's still out there across multiple different uh, domains uh, and, and this step forward having uh, a voice enshrined in the in the constitution will just play to that strengthening of solutions to, to ensure that we have a, a positive uh, construct within community. Without wanting to create a political sort of tit for tat, which uh, this program is not political, uh, I'll just stick to this topic for now. And I just want to put to you, um, we, you know, we've interviewed people like Alex Antic on this program. He's opposed uh, what happened on Sunday, sort of called out the fact that there wasn't a, a great crowd that attended and uh, just seemed to oppose uh, the order of events. Now, I just sort of would like to get your opinion as to why um, someone like Alex Antic and others for that matter uh, are opposing what happened in South Australia on Sunday, given that it's not constitutionally ensured in the state here in South Australia. Um, is your view 
they might be doing this just because of the fact that, you know, they're threatened with uh, the onset of the referendum at a federal level? Or why do you think they might be calling it out? Well, my view is that um, diverse opinions make a very healthy democracy. Um, and having those diverse opinions uh, of either for or against or even unsure um, allows for a greater discussion around what could possibly be better or what could possibly work uh, towards a stronger process for a particular topic. In the, the focus on the voice, obviously there's been quite a, an array of different opinions uh, far and wide, even within the Aboriginal community as well in itself. And there's been people who identify as Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander uh, who are for it, against it, and also unsure. And that's completely fine. Uh, I think those uh, opinions and those perspectives make a healthy um, dialogue um, to, to really hash out what uh, could be created uh, heading towards the, the federal referendum. Um, but at the same time, within our communities, I think we need to recognise that these discussions will be happening at a community level between everyday citizens uh, in the towns, such as Sajuna, for example, where I grew up. Um, yeah, I'm sure local people are talking about what does this voice mean at a federal level? What would it look like? Well, then all of a sudden what we see is a lot more stronger social uh, engagement between different peoples of communities as well. And being part of that discussion, I think, is healthy uh, for communities to come together and, and solve problems together uh, and discuss these types of things. So I'm all for diverse, diverse opinions and, and making that um, you know, I agree, open, transparent conversation in the interest of um, strong democracy. All right, we'll leave the voice there. Um, let's talk about your foray into politics. You're the SA Greens co-convener. Uh, tell us how this all came about and uh, I guess where your aspirations lie with regards to a career in politics. Uh, yeah, well, uh, certainly um, purely off of interest base. You know, you, you, when you get uh, a, an opportunity to be involved in politics, you want to surround yourself with like-minded individuals who, who have similar values. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% in terms of aligning directly with groups of people. Um, having, yet again, like I said before, a different perspective, a different take on things, uh, brings, yet again, a healthy dialogue to the table. Uh, and that's really how I saw uh, being involved uh, and getting involved uh, with the Greens here in Adelaide was an opportunity for, one, getting involved in the political process, First Nations people in particular, um, there's a very low representation uh, at the same time an engagement level of First Nations people being involved in that political process. Um, so that was sort of uh, an opportunity for me to excover, discover a whole new uh, space uh, that, that I, growing up, wasn't really exposed to or really um, had an opportunity of engaging within going through school and whatnot. So it wasn't until uh, my later years as a young uh, adult did I really see the and the importance of engaging in the political space. So that was the first part. And then um, obviously once you're uh, involved in the inner sanctum, so to speak, or, or participating in, in events and social activities, um, you, you build a, a more comfortable um, engagement, I guess, with, with the uh, organisation of such as the Greens, which I'm involved in. Um, and then you decide to take on some leadership roles. And that's simply what I did. I for an opportunity of, of putting my hand up to, to lead the, the organisation, the group, uh, be the co-convener alongside um, uh, another fellow member. And um, I was quite lucky to, to have that confidence given to me by the, the membership to take on that role. So you could say it just purely happened by a series of moments rather than a, a structured plan of getting into the political space. Um, certainly, uh, I, I would love to see myself potentially uh, be, be firmly in the political space as a member of parliament or at least a candidate wanting to be a member of parliament. Um, yet again, diverse opinions make a healthy democracy. So. Well, Brent, you're only a young man and you're on a vast number of boards, almost too many for me to name. Um, but uh, my understanding is that you're a big Crows man and you've been appointed as the new board director of the Crows Foundation. So tell us more about this and exactly what the role is. Yes. Uh, so last year, I was lucky enough to uh, put my hand up and, and um, apply for, for the position that was advertised to join the Adelaide Crows Foundation. Um, the foundation looks primarily after the um, community impact uh, that the crews um, are fortunate enough to do across the, the state. Um, there's actually a really good program for the First Nations communities up in the AQI lands uh, around um, using sports to sort of drive uh, math, science, technology and engineering, that STEM space. So 
um, you know, that was sort of an attraction for me being a, a tech person myself. Um, I really wanted to contribute to not only the foundation, but that particular program as well for First Nations communities. Um, I put my hand up, I applied uh, and was successful uh, in um, being uh, appointed to, to join the foundation's board. So that's great. I'm, I'm quite excited. I must say, though, uh, that the question was asked of me if I do support the Crows. Um, I'm not a hundred percent supporting the Crows in terms of the football. Like I'm a fifty percent, I guess. I'm one foot in, one foot out. I grew up um, supporting Hawthorne. Uh, my dad brainwashed me uh, at an early age in that regard. My mom supports the Crows wholeheartedly. So I'm fifty percent, if you could say. Well, we thank you for being transparent. I want to finish on a serious note, though, Brenz. We'll take it all the way back to your Sejuna roots. It's been a, well, it's been an indifferent start for the council in Sejuna. We've seen the uh, a number of great events being secured for the months ahead, but also at the same time, we've seen um, some difficulties arise with uh, antisocial behaviour being a key topic that's come out of Sejuna in the last three months or so. So what do you make of that? And uh, you know, as someone who grew up in Sejuna, as a parochial uh, Sejuna person, what's uh, what, what, are, what are the key solutions that you would sort of raise? Yeah, well, anti, anti-social behaviour is a, an issue across the board. I think it's a, a, a national challenge for um, let alone governments or state governments to, to manage um, and local councils to manage. You know, certainly the, the example for Sejuna around anti-social behaviour um, look, I, I certainly don't see it as an isolated challenge. Um, there's multiple different challenges in Sejuna that I think um, everyone uh, needs to get behind or, or in terms of solutions, in creating solutions to, to solve these complicated problems. And yet again, going back to my point about um, having everyone at the table to come up with uh, uh, solutions that are based on diverse opinions. I think is what um, you know, Sejuna is, is certainly trying to create with a number of different initiatives I'm aware of. Um, so I'd love to see some more um, collaborative approaches around solution building and evidence-based decision-making uh, for these types of uh, challenges within country South Australia and in particular in Sejuna. Um, I'm all for even being a part of those discussions. Uh, if I were to have an opportunity to, to be invited, I certainly wouldn't um, uh, turn that down. I would want to be involved whenever I can to, to bring my expertise or potential um, experiences to the table. Um, I think Sejuna has a lot to offer. Um, and you know, in my role as, as um, being the, the chairperson for Far West Coast Investments, um, which is a part of the native title group uh, in Sejuna, we play a big role in the economic side of, of that district, You know, being a, an Aboriginal organisation, but possessing uh, a quite a large investment portfolio. So we too want to play a part of not only the economic solutions, but also the social solutions within the town. So I think it's more around people simply coming together uh, and being at the table to create solutions that are in the interest of advancing township together. Well, Brent Saunders, I think it would be a no-brainer to have you involved in those types of roundtables. Brent Saunders, great to have you join us here on the Country Viewpoint on Fly FM. Really appreciate your time and all the very best going forward in all the uh, things that you're involved in. There's a vast number of them, as I said before, so uh, you take it easy and all the very best. Thank you very much. I should shout out to my my dad, uh, Brent Senior, and my mum, Vicky. Um, just because I know this will get that head out that way. So <laughs> thanks for having me.